Hi Pint Folk, welcome back. Uh, it's been a little while since our last video because of all the brewing that's been going on. Um, so we'll start off where we are at at the minute. Uh, if you've watched my other videos or our other videos with my darling wife on camera, uh, House of Hops has been a bit of a disaster to us. Now, uh, I was able to use Ice Spindle, so we'll put a link down below for if you want to buy an Ice Spindle off Asset Solution. Anybody that comes via our link gets 5% off, so you might as well have it. It's for a calibrated one, and I advise that's the way to go because they're, they're a bit of a pain in the setup. So unless you're a computer wizard, you're just better off going to Asset Solution and buying one that's already calibrated so you know that it's correct. So, when we brewed House of Hops, it started off well. It had a good start, but it got to 57% attenuation, which is a measurement of how much of the sugars have been eaten and converted to uh, carbon dioxide and alcohol so it's a good measure of what's going on in your pinter it got to a certain stage and it just stopped dead as far as i'm concerned and a few others that are on facebook etc that's down to too much pressure building up in your pinter and that causing the yeast don't like too much pressure i mean you if you were inside a pressurized container you wouldn't like it either but i think anything over 37 psi that can cause your brews to stall so Instead of chucking it down the sink this time, we decided to, so if your brews are sweet and you think it hasn't brewed, bottle it. Don't add a carbonation drop or more sugar because there's enough sugar still in it. And we're going to let, give the, the camera, camera crew a treat. We're going to, so yep, still fizzy. And there's quite a lot of yeast at the bottom because it did, when it poured it was still cloudy. It wasn't, it wasn't nice. So we're gonna, so this is no added sugar drops, no added anything, put in a dark cupboard for two weeks and then lift it out of that and put into the fridge for a further two days. And now... What's the other one you had in the cupboard? No, it was all House of Pops. What was it? Oh, I did one ages ago, I did one ages ago. So look at that, that is a lovely... <coughs> look at that, that's just lovely. A lovely, clear, well carbonated. Mm, still really fizzy. House of hops, yeah. You didn't. It, it didn't. It didn't need. Um, some of the guys were worried that it might turn into a bottle bomb, which is when there's too much pressure. But <laughs> uh, yeah, I let the. We're gonna get that cameraman. See what you think. Camera person, not cameraman. Camera person. So tell us what you think of house of hops. Mm. I mean, it was pretty. It was terribly sweet initially, and then it had a bit of a bitter kick to it. So that's. Even with the amount of yeast that's settled out of it in the bottle, it's probably much nicer. Mm. Or is it still a bit? No, I think it's nice. Okay. So, uh, but the thing was, I liked the other one. Yes. So if your beers are too sweet, don't be don't be feared to. I mean, these are these are dead cheap to buy. Um, just bottle it. Uh, mm. Sanitize it. Stick it away. What do you think? Oh yeah. Wow, I could even drink that. That's much better. That is that's, that's still nice. it's still a little bit bitter. Yeah, it's supposed to be. It's a hopped. Mm. It's a hops. It's hoppy. But no, that's that is drinkable. The other stuff I was absolutely disgusting. <laughs> now, with the lessons we learned with the ice, well, that is, that's nice. That is nice. So folks, mm, tasty fish hops when it's done correct and brewed correctly is actually nice. Now. We'll move on to lessons that we learnt with using the ice spindle, and that was to watch ice spindle TV, which is way much more exciting than someone's stuff on the actual TV. Keeping an eye on how it's brewing, looking at the graph, and keeping your temperatures right, it's all good. So this, folks, is a space hopper, painter one brew, done inside a painter two. We kept a close eye on it. It started off with the original gravity of 1.076, so there's plenty of sugars dissolved in it. It actually was slightly out of date when we brewed it and all the sugars inside the press had like crystallized out and it took us, remember we like squeezing that trying to get it yeah, out? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It needed hot water to try and rinse it out eventually but and then we went a stage further and we added 100 grams of brewing sugar just to add it. So <laughs> we did six days brewing and I knew it had finished because the graph leveled off. I also knew it had finished because the attenuation figure was 79%. Anything above 75 
is considered to be there thereabouts. Pardon me, that was a house of hops. So six days brewing, we did three days cold crashing, just because the weather suited, it was nice and cool at night. And then this has now been seven days conditioning. And the ABV is a very healthy 7.92%. We'll just cover eight, eight sounds good. Oh, pardon me, that is fizzy. You're getting very complicated here with the numbers. I know, I know, but people who, people who have used it will know what I'm talking about. Okay. They will know what I'm talking about. And if you don't, we're going to do another video for sort of beginners on ice spindle when I get it out of this, because it's obviously still in there. So, let's see what 8% space hoppers like. Do you want to taste on it? Mm -hmm. Why not? <laughs> yes, why not is right. Why not is right. So, good news is, it's carbonated. It's not a complete... foam disaster. And... It's lovely and clear. Yeah, that's nice. So that's good. Do you want to taste that one? And I will. Let's see. I'll put it just below so we can see. Taste this one. Oh, you can see plenty. Now, of this as well, guys. What I did was plenty of fizz. Anyway, brewed it at setting one. So if you've seen my videos, if you go back, it was brewed at setting one for the majority of it. And then only turned to setting two when there was two days left to brew because with the, that amount of sugar mm. in it, it was hissing like a steam train. That's different. Oh, wow, that is different. I'm going to have a good slug of that because I definitely got plenty of fruit on the aftertaste on that one. So this is 8%. Um, I'm the opposite. I'm not tasting the... Like last time. I'm getting there's definitely no that's really nice. Maybe I've got the old Covey. Maybe you've got the old Covey, yeah. But that's no like I that tastes really, really nice. And it's not overly sweet. Sometimes when we brewed mm. space hopper, but I'm getting big mango from like right kicking the mangoes. Really? Yeah, definitely. Really nice. That's lovely. And Oof. it's really lovely and clear. It is carbonated without being overly fizzy, without pumping out tons of foam. I don't know why everybody has to sing about doing it on setting two. It's too foamy anyway, so just turn the foam measure down. But yes, guys, that's a very, very nice space hopper and lethal. So, but it doesn't taste, doesn't taste like it's 8%. It doesn't taste like my normal space hopper. That's because space hopper we did in P1. Oh, that's lovely. Mm -hmm. That's really, really nice. Guys, so take my advice. Not all Pinker 2s are the same, by the way. Some of the PRVs work fine. I think mine and a couple of my Pinker 2s is overly tight. It doesn't vent enough. So I brew it setting one. So if you are getting sweet brews, that's a good sign. Your PRV is too tight. Brew it one. Join us in the next video, we're going to do lots of stuff. We've got um, Lost in Translation coming up. We've got a video on uh, simple how to use the ice spindle. So uh, join us for the next one and thanks for watching.